final thing we're going to look at here in this video set is milling. So to start things off here, we've just got a picture here of a mill and just going to run through a few of its features. So to start off, we've got our workpiece, so it sits on this sort of flat benchy table looking thing here. And up on top we have our spindle coming through here and a multi-tooth cutter. So in the mill, unlike the lathe, it's the cutting tool that rotates and the workpiece is stationary. Uh, you can also have a support there for our spindles. Um, the table which our workpiece sits on, it can move in all three dimensions, so up and down, in and out, and side to side. And for our cutter, we can also have a vertical cutting. So what we had just on there before would have been horizontal cutting. Now there's a vertical cutting. Um, works actually similar to a drill. However, uh, the bearings that hold it all together up top here are designed differently to deal with the um, side loading that this cutter will have to withstand. So that can then move up and down and we can mill off the top faces here of our workpiece. Uh, and it can also be tilted on angles. So he's trying to represent that here. And this can be useful for creating some angled surfaces on our workpiece. So what are some of the milling operations? Uh, the first one is slab milling. So this we've just got our cutting tool here, uh, it's rotating, pull our material through like so and we can just take um, however much material we need off our workpiece. Uh, the next one is gang milling. Um, so this is having several cutters on one spindle and in this image it's a bit tough to see but using this we're cutting um, some groove slots all at once in the one operation. Um, to do this requires a slightly more powerful mill as you can imagine because you're making more cuts at once. Uh, we've got side and face milling. Um, so the general use of this is to cut a slot. So we've got this cutting tool here rotating that way. Move our workpiece through and we'll get a slot that looks something like this here. Uh, we've got form milling. Uh, so it's a similar tool to our side and face milling except uh, our tool has this sort of V shape to it um, and an example of what this can be used for is gear cutting so you can see here it's rotating round and we're able to cut out each individual tooth on our gear um, there are other more efficient ways of making gears but this is one way so they were horizontal milling operations, um, so now we have some vertical milling operations. Uh, so once again, face milling. So here we've got rotating around this way and we're able to just take off material off the top surface of our workpiece. Uh, another form of slop milling, so here we've got what is a almost si quite similar to a drill bit and it moves through the material. Um, obviously this is a lot stronger than a drill bit to deal with these high side forces that it will be encountering. Um, dovetail milling. So we've got this sort of fancy looking tool here and as that goes in it can create this sort of V slot in our um, in our workpiece. And another type is, say, woodruff keyway milling. And, of course, there are other different sort of keyways we can do. This is just one example. So I've got a tool that's something like this. And we can cut these little slots like this out of our material. Um, so these are just some of the cutters we went through. So we had a V-groove cutter, a convex cutter. So this would be a way of producing a... Uh, just a nice convex curve and it was relatively simple to use. Uh, I've got a bevel cutter so it's a quick and easy way to create bevels on some shapes. Dovetail groove cutter which we just went through before um, 
and end mill cutting and woodruff key mill cutting. Uh, we also have side and face cutters, concave cutter, so it does the opposite operation to our convex cutter, and a shell end mill. So this is similar to what you might use in your slab milling operation, but of course this would be quite a high quality steel and you might not need that the whole way through, so this might just mount onto our spindle using that middle section there. 